Hi guys, this is Lila. Welcome to my channel Lila Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the what is C language. So we will have a brief introduction about this C language. In our previous video, we have seen how we can install the C compiler and how we can run the C code in the Visual Studio code I have shown you. Now let's jump back to the basic things. What is a C language? So this is very basic important for every programmers to learn. So having a strong foundation or by having a knowledge in the C language is must and should essentially for every software developers like C and C++. So we'll have a, we'll have a brief uh, uh, knowledge about the C language and I will try to explain you in a small, small videos like this. <coughs> so now what is a C language? So this video provides an introduction to the C programming language, its significance and why it remains relevant today despite the emergence of newer programming languages like C++, C Sharp and also Java. So we will try to see why still the C programming language is still relevant today, learning why it is important to learn today because in spite of having the newer programming languages like C Sharp, Java, .NET, so Node.js and these all things. Let's try to see. Overview of C origin. So C was developed in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie at AT&T's Bell Laboratories in the USA. So popularity. <clears throat> so popularity. So how it became? It became widely used because of its simplicity and easy of use. So it was developed in. So the first language it was developed in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie at AT&T's Bell Laboratories in the USA. It seems. So by that time it became widely used because of its simplicity and ease of use. So why learn C today? So why we need to learn the C today? So some articles if you try to see in the internet challenges the opinion that C is outdated and no longer worth learning. Instead it highlights several reasons why it is still important. So what are those reasons? Let's try to see. So foundation for the object oriented programming. So now for example let's say that if you are newer to programming and you want to learn about the object oriented programming and all those things. So languages like C++, C Sharp and Java use OOP principles. So learning C first provides foundational programming skills that make it easier to transition to these languages. So C is the basic foundational programming skill and make it easier to transform or to move into the next programming languages. So this, this provides a basic foundation. <coughs> a two step learning process like C first then OOP languages is more thorough and rewarding. So that is the main thing. So first if you learn C every programmer then learning the OOP languages is more thorough and rewarding. So C in operating systems. So what are the, uh, how in operating system it will support? Major operating systems like Windows, Unix, Linux and Android have large portions written in C only. So the almost all the operating systems like Windows, Unix, Linux and Android everything have been written in C only. Extending or customization these operating systems often involves writing devices, device driver programs which are typically written in C. So if you want to extend these operating systems features and all those things means then we need to write the device driver programs. So these device driver programs are also written in C only. C in embedded systems. So where we are using this C, I am trying to explain you. So smart devices like microwave ovens, washing machines and digital cameras use embedded programs. So these programs need to run efficiently and fit within limited memory, making C the ideal language for such tasks. So like the programming and all those things in washing machines, microwave ovens, everything is written in C only. C in gaming and performance intensive applications. Modern games require high performance to handle real-time user inputs. Gaming frameworks like DirectX used for building fast and interactive games are written in C only. So this is the thing. Modern games are also written in C only. So key characteristics of a programming language. Normally if you want to know about a programming language, it should have a key characteristics. So some articles, uh, some articles or some videos if you try to see outside. So it introduces four important aspects of any programming language. So if you want to, if, if any language become, want to become a programming language means it needs to follow these four important aspects. The first one is data storage, how the language manages the data. So that is one thing and data operations, how the language process or manipulate this data, uh, the stored data. And the other one is the input output, how the language interacts with the user or external systems. And the last one is the control flow, how the language organizes the sequence of instructions in a program. So these are the four important aspects that the programming language should be uh, considered. So how the data is stored and how the data operations manipulate, how the data is manipulated and how the uh, language interacts with the user input and output and how the language organizes the sequence of instructions in a program. So in this video, this video, so whatever the videos we are trying to do, so discusses the evolution and versions of the C programming language 
highlighting the standards and which version is being focused on the content provided. So let's try to see about what are the different versions of C we are having. First one is the KNRC which has been introduced in 1978. So named of the Brian Keringen and Dennis Ritchie who authored the first official book in C in 1978. This version laid the foundation for the C language and is referred to as K and R. Next one came is the 1989 ANSI C. In 1983, the American National Standard Institute ANSI formed a committee called X3J11 to standardize the C language. And next one is the result was the ANSI C standard finalized in 1989, officially named as ANSI X3 1.159 1989 Programming Language C. So this version is often called as ANSI C or C89. So this is the another version which you are having in the internet. So the language C. Another one is the ISOC. In 1995, the International Organization for Standardization ISO extended the ANSI C standard. This version is called as an ISOC. So this is an another version of C. Last one is the C19 in 2000 version. In March 2000, ANSI adopted ANSI adopted ISOC along with the new updates, creating a revised standard known as C99. C99 introduced several new features and enhancements to the language. So this one is the C99, last version. So now why these standards matter? So you may be having a doubt that why these standards matter. Each standard ensures consistency in how the C language is implemented and used across the different platforms. The C99 standard is modern yet widely supported, making it a good choice for learning and the practical application. So the last one, the last version is the C99 standard is the most modern and it also widely supported making it a good choice for learning and also the practical applications. So now in this session what we will try to do it is we will be learning about the C99 only and why because so we all, we all, will, be, we all will be learning about the C99. So whenever you are learning about C99 means all the versions also the previous versions also it will be working why because so these all versions first it has came and afterwards only the latest version has been developed. So in the, throughout this videos, playlist and all the things whichever we are learning C. So I will be explaining you in the C99 standard. So you can see the thing and the code whichever we are trying to execute, it will execute in the older versions also. So this is all about the brief introduction of this C language. So hope you understood about this concept. So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.